Hi right, guys, um, we are moving to section 1.4, which is absolute value equations. Absolute value is a very important topic, which you're going to see lots of different things with uh, throughout the course of the class. So section 1.4, absolute value equations. There's a Desmos activity that you'll see a part of um, class. Um, so don't worry about that right now, but you'll have to go through that Desmos activity at some point. Objectives, so we're going to be solving absolute value equations. We're going to solve equations using two absolute values and identify special solutions. So an absolute value equation is an equation that contains an absolute value expression. You've probably seen that before. The key thing here when we're solving absolute value equations is there's going to be two expressions that you're going to have to be solving. Okay, so there's going to be two related linear equations that you're going to be solving as a part of these absolute value equations. And you'll see that when we go through some examples. So let's take a look at this first example, which is example number one, where we have x minus four is equal to six. Now, when you're writing or solving an absolute value equation, you're gonna separate this into two specific cases. The first case, and I always write it as case one and case two, case one looks exactly as it's written without the absolute value signs. So we have x minus four equals six. So we always want to think to ourselves when we're dealing with absolute value, we're dealing with two cases that we're going to have to solve. First case is exactly as it's written without the absolute value sign. Case number two, all that happens here in our second case is that our, our uh, right side is going to become negative. So we're going to have x minus 4 is equal to negative 6. Now, what is absolute value? Absolute value is the distance from zero. Okay, so how do we solve this? Let's start by adding four to both sides. So add four, add four. Here's one of my answers, x equals 10. And on this one, add four, add four, and I'm gonna get x equals negative two. Now, if I wanna check my work here, I can take both of these answers and I can go ahead and I can plug them back in as a check. So let's check that. I'm gonna check them separately. So let's plug in 10. The absolute value of 10 minus four is that equal, and I put a little question mark to six. Well, is the absolute value of 6 equal to 6? Yeah, the absolute value of 6 is just equal to 6, so that works. What is absolute value? Again, it's the distance from 0. So when you're thinking about yourself, okay, how far away is 6 um, from 0? Well, it's 6 away, so it works. Now let's plug in our other solution, negative 2. So negative 2 minus 4. Is that equal to 6? Well, negative two minus four is negative six. Is the absolute value of negative six equal to six? Yes, because the absolute value of negative six is just positive six. Because again, what does absolute value represent? The distance from zero. How far away is negative six from zero on a number line? Well, it's six away. That's why the absolute value of negative six is six. So remember, two cases when you're dealing with these, and then just go ahead and solve those. But on your second case, remember, we've got to make that right side negative, okay? So let's look at a couple examples here. There's something special about number three. We've got x minus four equals four. So let's write our two cases. x minus one equals positive four. x minus one equals negative four. Solve, add one, add one, x equals positive five, add one, add one, that'll cancel, and you get x equals negative three. And there are my two solutions. Now, the reason I said number three is interesting is because you end up getting three plus x equals, and this is why it's interesting, negative three. Oops. I want the highlighter there. Hmm. 
So we've got x equals, or th absolute value of 3 plus x equals negative 3. That's an issue, okay? So somehow my left side went away. Let's get that back here. Absolute value can never equal a negative. Okay, so absolute value can never, make sure you write that down, equal a negative. So, can the absolute value of 3 plus x equal negative 3? No, there's no number in there that I can plug in for x in the world that'll make this solution true. So in this case here, we have no solution. Absolute value cannot be equal to a negative. All right, let's keep going. So sometimes absolute value is not by itself to begin with. In these situations, what you have to do is you have to isolate that absolute value before you can move on. So we're looking here, we've got 3x plus 9, but we have this minus 10 over here. So what I have to do is I have to isolate the absolute value. And I'll circle my absolute value or I'll highlight it or I'll do something to recognize, okay, I have to get that thing by itself. Well, how am I going to get that thing by itself? Well, in order to get that thing by itself, that absolute value, I have to add the 10 to both sides. So before you write your two cases, and this is a big thing, you must isolate absolute value first. So this has to be your first step. Don't go ahead and write the absolute value of 3x plus 9 minus 10 equals negative 4 and then equals positive 4. You have to isolate that absolute value first. And a big mistake people make is they say, oh, absolute value can't be equal to a negative, so this is no solution. Wait a second. I haven't isolated absolute value first. And once you isolate absolute value, negative 4 plus 10 is equal to 6. So absolute value is not equal to a negative. It's equal to a positive. Now I can write my two cases. So I'm going to have 3x plus 9 is equal to positive 6. And then I'm going to have 3x plus 9 is equal to negative 6. There are my two cases. Subtract 9. 3x equals negative 3. And x is equal to negative 1. That works. Subtract 9. 3x equals negative 15. Divide by 3. And x is equal to negative 5. You can have negative solutions. The absolute value just can't be equal to a negative. All right. Let's keep going. We're going to skip this. This is for some other stuff. And we're going to look at a couple more examples here where we have to isolate absolute value. So let's take a look here. I want to get this by itself in example five, and I want to get this by itself in example six. So what am I going to do here? I'm going to subtract five first. And now I've got absolute value of x minus two is equal to four. I can write my two cases x minus 2 is equal to 4. Write it just as it is. Now make the right side negative equals negative 4. Add 2. Add 2. x is equal to 6. Add 2. Add 2. x is equal to negative 2. And there are my solutions. Now on this one, number 6, that 4 in front gives people a lot of trouble. Some people want to try to distribute it. Don't do that. So you have to think to yourself, what operation is being done here? So hopefully you're saying to yourself, oh, I know, it's being multiplied. A lot of people want to subtract that 4. That's no good. We have to divide both sides by 4. Okay, because this operation here is multiplication. So now what am I left with? I'm left with the absolute value of 2x plus 7 is equal to positive 4. Let's write our two cases. 2x plus 7 equals 4, just as we see it. And then I'm going to write the other case a different color this time. 2x plus 7 equals negative 4. 
Solve it out. Subtract 7. Subtract 7. I've got 2x equals negative 3. That's okay. I can have a fraction. Remember, we like to leave, and it might be different for you, but we like to leave in this class everything in fractions unless we're dealing with a real world example. So don't give us um, a mixed number. Don't give us negative 1.5. Let's leave it as that negative 3 halves. Improper fractions, perfectly okay. And you're going to see another one over here. Divide by 2, divide by 2, and x is equal to negative 11 halves. Perfectly fine. We like it that way. Leave it as that improper fraction. All right? So when you solve an absolute value equation, it's possible for a solution to be what we call extraneous. An extraneous solution is an apparent solution that must be rejected because it does not satisfy the original equation. The main time you're going to see this extraneous solution is when you have an x value on both sides like we do here. We have an x over here and we have an x over here. That should be your trigger and like an alarm should go off in your head like, oh, it might be something extraneous here. But we go and we solve these in the exact same way that we solve every other one, okay? So what do we do? We start by writing our two equations and we just make the, the right side negative like we normally do. Absolute value is isolated. So my one solution or my one equation is going to be 2x plus 12 equals negative 4x. Then my second one is going to be, I'm going to do it in a different color, 2x plus 12 equals, oh, this one should be positive, sorry. Write it just like it is. Getting ahead of myself. And then negative 4x. Now let's solve. Got to isolate that um, x value. So subtract 2x, subtract 2x. I get 12 is equal to 2x. Divide by 2. Move this. And I get 6 is equal to x. That's one of my solutions. Now let's do our green one. And add 4. Sorry. I could add the 4x, but would make life a little bit more challenging. So I'm going to subtract the 2x like I did over there. And now I've got 12 equals negative 6x. Divide by negative 6. And you get negative 2 is equal to x. So from this point, I have to go and I have to actually check my answers. I know it's like nobody ever wants to do that. But you have to do it. Okay, so when I go to check, let's check x equals 6. Into our original equation, it goes. And I've got the absolute value of 2 times 6. Plus 12. Is that equal to 4 times 6? Well, 2 times 6 is 12. So now I have the absolute value 12 plus 12. Is that equal to 24? I've got the absolute value of 24. Is that equal to 24? It is. So this one is good. Okay, x equals 6 is good. But now i got to check my other one. So let's go ahead and let's check that other one. Take that negative 2 and throw it in there and throw it in there. So absolute value of 2 times negative 2 plus 12. Is that equal to 4 times negative 2? So I end up getting here an absolute value of negative 4 plus 12. Is that equal to negative 8? I end up getting the absolute value of 8 equal to negative 8. That's not true. The absolute value of 8 is not equal to negative 8. It's equal to positive 8. So this solution is out. It's what we call an extraneous solution. Because it doesn't lead to a result that is a true statement. All right? So that negative 2 is out, and the only solution here is x equals 6. I love these error analysis. You'll see these throughout the year, where we have to try and figure out what did the person do wrong here. So let's take a look at this person and see what they did wrong. So if we're looking at this error analysis here, they looks like they've written their two cases. One case looks exactly like it is. The other case, they're changing the sign, and they're making it negative. But something is off here, okay? And if you look through, you might say, well, they solved everything right. They added the 1 to both sides. They got x equals negative 4 and x equals 5. 
what is wrong here? Well, what's wrong here is absolute value cannot be equal to a negative. All right, my absolute value is isolated. I can't ever have it equal to a negative. So what's my case here? I shouldn't even have gone through these steps. This is no solution. Absolute value cannot equal a negative. Okay, so yes, if this was like a different number, did they go through the procedure correctly? They did, but I don't even go through this here because I can't have that absolute value equal to a negative. Remember that alarm. Always think if there's a negative involved with absolute value, something should be going off. All right, there's a Quizlet Live that you're gonna have to do with more practice with this. Hopefully you're comfortable with it, but again, the more practice you do, just remember those two cases, key things. What am I taking away? First step, gotta isolate absolute value. Second step, write my two cases and solve. Third step, check for extraneous solutions. Fourth thing, keep in the back of my mind, absolute value cannot be equal to a negative. That's it for today, guys. All right, have a great day and make sure you complete all the assignments.